Welcome back. Let's get crack a lacking on some data analysis, eh? Boy, R, have we missed you sincerely. Okay, so we're going to start by loading the exercise data set. And as always, the way we do that is we type data exercise underscore data. By the way, the data sets that we use are preloaded into Pfeiffer. And that's why I am saying data, open parentheses, whatever the data set's name is. That means it is referencing the data set that is loaded in the Pfeiffer package or some other package. For your research, you will have to import them with like a read.csv or using the import feature in our studio or something like that. Anyway, on with the uh, thing, thing, data analysis thing. Okay, so now that we have loaded the exercise data set, let's say now we want to look at it, head exercise underscore data, which is just going to show us the first seven rows. Oh, I actually got to read the first line of code first. So read that in uh, and then read the exercise underscore data part in. I'm going to actually make this a little bit bigger and this a little bit smaller. Okay, so we got therapy type, health, motivation, weight loss, etc. So again, the primary dependent variable here is weight loss. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go through all the steps of data analysis that I've shown you so far. So you remember a couple weeks ago, we did univariate visualizations, then we did bivariate visualizations, and then we did some diagnostics, and now we're doing estimates. And so I'm gonna go through that entire process by showing you the univariate distributions first, then the bivariates, then the diagnostics, and then finally concluding with the estimates. It's almost as if I planned that sequence. So now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and visualize the outcome variable, which again is weight loss. So to do that, we will go flex plot weight dot loss tilde one data equals exercise underscore data. And then that gives us a histogram, and we have visualized this before, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but basically symmetrical, maybe a little bit negatively skewed, but nothing that we're gonna worry about too much. So that checks out. And then now, uh, let's say for this analysis, we wanna look at the relationship between satisfaction and weight loss. So let's go ahead and look at the univariate distribution of that. Oops, flex plot, satisfaction, tilde, Gotta spell it right, tilde one, data equals exercise underscore data. And that is a uh, integer variable, so it looks a little wonky, but nothing that I would worry too much about. Um, and this is gonna be the predictor variable anyway, and by the way, we don't care about normality with predictor variables. It's not at all an assumption of predictor variables, so we're okay with that. So um, basically what I'm looking for is coding errors and that sort of thing. So um, very few people were super unsatisfied, which is good. You would expect that to be the case. Likewise, not a whole lot of people were like incredibly satisfied. So there's a lot of eh going on. And that's okay. I don't have any stakes in this study. Okay, so now that we've done that, now we can start visualizing the bivariate distribution now that everything checks out for the most part. Weight.loss tilde satisfaction data equals exercise underscore data. And that is what we get. Okay, so uh, the lowest line indicates there's probably not really any serious bend, so that's good. Um, it seems to say that uh, the more satisfied you are, the more your weight the more weight you lose, which actually makes sense. And come to think of it, we should probably switch the axes. Why are we saying that? Well, because I would suspect that's the direction that the causal arrows go, that if you lose more weight, you will be more satisfied with the program. Not that more satisfied with the program causes you to lose more weight, although I suppose that's theoretically possible, but either way, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and stick with this one. Um, so satisfaction. Uh, on the y-axis and weight loss on the x-axis. And everything looks good there. There is a positive relationship. And so now that we have visualized things, we can say visuals be visualized. 
Now what we can do is we can look at the assumptions. In order to actually visualize the assumptions, we have to actually fit a model. So I'm gonna create a model called mod equals LM, which stands for linear model. And then satisfaction on the y-axis, tilde weight dot loss, data equals exercise underscore data. And that model runs. And then now what I can do is I can go to visualize mod. And then here, I've already looked at the bivariate plot, so I'm just gonna say plot equals residuals. That is going to give me my residual plots. So looking at the top left, that looks about normally distributed. Nothing that I'm too terribly worried about there, which is good. And then we have the residual dependence plot um, that says that there might be a little bit of bendiness for the lower values of the fitted variable, which in this case is weight loss. Um, so there might be some curvilinear there, curvilinearity there, but not too much and not something that I would worry about here. And then in the bottom, we have the SL plot, which shows that maybe there's slight homo or heteroscedasticity, but very, very slight. Um, and how I recognize that is that for higher levels of the fitted values, we have a lower fit of this regression line. And then for lower values, we have a higher fit, but it's super slight that I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay, so at this point, I feel comfortable with my model, my residuals check out. And now finally, we can look at those estimates and see how they look. So now with that, I'm going to go make a comment. Look at them estimates, dude. So I will go estimates of mod. All right, so it gives me a couple things that are interesting and beneficial and amazing and awesome. So it gives me an R squared, which I actually didn't talk about in the video. Uh, R squared is just the square of the correlation coefficient. Simple enough, right? So the square of the correlation coefficient is 0.316 and the 0.21 and 0.42 is the confidence interval, which we will talk about in a coming video. Uh, Semi-partial R squared, that's just gonna be the same and uh, we're not gonna worry about that measure until we start talking about multivariate estimates. And then now we get into the stuff that is kind of more interesting here. We've got the intercept and weight loss. That second one is the slope. So the intercept is 4.2. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that if you lose absolutely no weight, your satisfaction score will be 4.25 points on average. And then it gives us our lower and upper confidence interval limits, that sort of thing. And then we have weight loss below that, which gives us 0.15. So every pound you lose, we expect your satisfaction score to go up by 0.15 points. Now, we don't really know the scale very well of the um, satisfaction, although I guess we could Go back up to here, the flex plot, uh, satisfaction, univariate. Okay, so it ranges from zero to, it's kind of hard to tell with this graph. So another thing we could do, oh, we can learn another function. We can type in range of exercise underscore data, dollar sign, uh, satisfaction. And that tells us it ranges from zero to eight. Okay, so a 0.15 increase for every pound you lose. That's not super impressive, but hey, it's something. But more importantly, we could go to the standardized estimates and these can roughly be interpreted as, um, well, actually this is the interpretation. This tells you that for a standard deviation increase in weight loss, we would expect your, um, the standard deviation of uh, satisfaction to increase by about 0.5. So that's kind of that's kind of a big deal. That's pretty cool. So again, sta one standard deviation increase in weight loss means a half a standard deviation increase in your satisfaction. So that's that's uh, that's a pretty good size, I would guess. And then finally, we have sigma right here, which is the residual standard error, which tells you. All right, after we fit, how much can we expect you to vary on average from your satisfaction score? So that tells you that um, 
your residual standard deviation is 1.22-ish. So that was for a uh, numeric on numeric predictor. Let's go ahead and look at a categorical on numeric predictor. Okay, so let's say we want to add gender to this and see if uh, males and females differ in their satisfaction. But before we do that, let's go ahead and visualize the univariate distribution of gender. So here we would go satisfaction tilde gender data equals exercise underscore data. And oh, that's the bivariate. Skip the univariate. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Well, we'll interpret this while we're here. So that tells us that males and females are basically no different in their satisfaction. So apparently gender does not influence your satisfaction with the exercise program. But now let's look at the bivariate or the univariate gender tilde one data equals exercise not exercise exercise data. All right, and so that tells us we have um, about double the females in our group than we do males. Is that something we expect? I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe for some reason within this population, females are more interested in uh, weight loss, which is the primary outcome variable here than males. And okay, that sounds good. <clears throat> so now um, we can fit a model for the second relationship, satisfaction till the gender. And then now we can look at the residuals of that. And we've got some kind of wonky looking, or wonky looking not because uh, the residuals are wonky, more because the histogram, or the, by default, it kind of spread it out a little too much and that's okay. Um, and then here we have a relatively flat line across the fitted values, so yay, hallelujah, wahoo. That looks amazing and I am so excited right now, obviously. Okay. If we were to type in estimates of mod, that gives us this. So model R squared is super small right now. And the usually people don't interpret R squared, or at least they do, and they call it eta squared, but basically the same thing. Anyway, uh, again, semi-partial R squared doesn't really matter. And then now this tells you the, um, the means for each of the groups. So men lost on average 4.9 pounds. And these are the lower and the upper limits, which we'll talk about in eventually. And then females lost an average of 5.14 pounds. And then the difference between males and females, and this tells you which is subtracted from which. So it's female minus male, which gives a difference of 0.24. And the lower limit is negative 0.2. And the upper limit is 0.69 for a Cohen's D of 0.16, which is uh, considered a small effect size. So that's it, simple enough, right? And here we went through the entire process where we visualized the univariate distributions and the bivariate distributions. Then we checked out our diagnostics and then we concluded by looking at the estimates and now we're good and stuff, so wahoo. So that's all I have to say.